Here I'm going to show you how to take our form that we've made and how to use it to update data that we store in our data worksheet. So in our last tutorial we made it so we could find a record. Let's look for Judge Dredd. Fills into our form and now if we change something, let's say he's a senior, since he's a test tube baby, <laughs> hit submit, success, go to the data tab and you can see it changed to Judge Dredd Senior. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial and make sure you check Teach Excel for the premium course where I'm able to show you lots of stuff that I can't show you here on YouTube. And let's get started now. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. As usual for this course, please make sure you've watched the previous episodes of it so that you're all caught up. I'm not going to repeat or cover any of that stuff. And make sure that you download this file from Teach Excel so that you can follow along for the tutorial. And for those of you that think I drone on a little bit too much or explain things in a little bit too much detail, you'll like this tutorial. It's going to move pretty fast. Now, after the last tutorial, we have everything pretty much set up to do the next things. And what we needed to do for the next steps is to be able to locate the data on the data worksheet. So now we already have that with our find record feature, and that's going to make life a lot easier. So let's go to the VBA window and get started, Alt F11. Open up our code. Remember, 123456 is our password. And if you forgot why we do that, it's so that you can password protect your worksheet have your password in your macro and make it so that no one else can see that. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new macro, store update data. And it's actually going to be pretty easy to do. So I'm going to delete all of this, save this comment up here, delete all of this, and let's start fresh. So sub store underscore update data. And the way this macro will work is I've decided to keep it all with the submit button. Since our records are, are supposed to be unique for each row, the submit button can do both functions of adding new data as well as updating old data. It's going to use the ID number to make sure everything is unique. So that's a premise that's a very important. It's central to how all of these tutorials are going to work together. So just remember, each one of these values here in the ID column doesn't have to be a number. It could be whatever you want. It just has to be unique. So Alt F11. Add my little comments up here. So this one is going to take data from one worksheet, store it in the next empty row, or if the record exists, update it. So what we can do for that is to go here. Where is it? Module 2 and copy our stored data macro. Paste it over here. I'll zoom in once I start talking about the code specifically, but it'll be a little bit easier to view it like this. So now, here's our stored data macro. And can you think what we might need to change to make it so that it will update a value? We actually only have to change one thing, but it requires a little bit of code. And that is the next row variable. So next row, this variable, what's contained here is what we use to tell the macro on which row to input our data here on the data sheet that we get from the form. So all we have to do is to give it either a row of the next empty row, the row number for the next empty row, or the row of the one that we want to update. So we don't have to change anything else in our code. It's great. We just have to find which row. And if you watched the last tutorial, part six, you'll know that we now know how to find the row. So we find the row by the ID number. So let us go back to our select data, our select data macro. What do we need to find out? I will zoom in here. We need to know which column holds our unique identifier. So we need this data right here. We need to know what we want to search for. So we need this search value right here, although we're going to change the input box. 
Now, once we have those two things, all we need to do is to do our little search value check to make sure we have a value to search for. And then we need to get the code that finds the value that searches for it. And then the little if statement right here. So that's all we need to do. Let's copy paste it in there now. I'm going to zoom back out and make this a little easier. So we select this, copy this, go back to module four, paste it right here under the worksheets because we do need these worksheet references. Now let's make some space and go get the search feature. Search feature right here. Copy that, bring it over here, paste it in. Now let's go ahead and indent this code. Okay. Now let's go through it. It's, it's broken if we try and run it right now, but I want to go through it first a little bit before I update it. So let's zoom in. So we brought in the data ID column variable. If you want to, you can go ahead and pop that in up here, just as it was done for module three to declare the variable, but we don't really need to. So here, data sheet, if you copied and pasted this, make sure this is the same as the data sheet variable name right here. If you're not following this example exactly. Range A, okie dokie, that's where our ID is. Now, search value. Here, what we want to do, we don't want a pop-up box because that's an inconvenience. We want to get our search value right here. So let us view the formula bar, okay? That is cell F6. So Alt F11, let us hit Shift and then End to select all that, then Backspace. Now, what do we want? Well, we want it from our source sheet. So this guy right here. And we want it to be range F6. What do we want? We want the value of that cell. That's what we're going to use to conduct our search. So now we get it from that cell instead of a pop-up window input box. Search value, OK. We do the same checks as previously. Make sure the search value does not equal essentially nothing. So this takes care of if they hit the cancel button or the escape key uh, or they don't put in a search value. So basically they didn't put in a search ID. Now we go ahead and we do the search. We have brought in our data ID column variable and set that accordingly up here. We have our search value and our search value and I brought over the link to the Microsoft's website so you can get more information on dot find if you want to, but this should suffice right here. All these options. Then remember, we have to make sure that it actually found something. So here's our code to check if it found something. And now here's where we can change the rows. So this if statement, we have to go ahead and finish. So let's go down here, backspace one, else, then we go down here, tab, tab, enter, and if. So what we're going to do, if it already found a record right here, then we want to use the row of that record to input the data from the form. That way, it'll essentially update that record. Now, to make our life easier, we're just going to use the variable which is used throughout the rest of the macro. We're going to copy that and we're going to paste it right here. Now, down here, else, let us make a little comment, input new record. And so what this is going to do is it's going to get the next empty row from our data sheet. So this if statement right here, using the result from our find method, is what's going to determine if the next row is a row that already exists or if it's the next empty row. All of this other code can remain exactly the same because all it does is it takes values from the form, pops it into the data worksheet. 
and the clear data, same thing, just clears the form. Let's give it a once over real quick. Try to make sure there aren't any errors. Alt F11 to go back to the form. And let's go over here. Okay, we have Judge Dredd, Thanos. Let's just do this, make sure it works. Two, two, two. Okay, I want to put him into the blue department. Hit submit. And we got a little bit of an error here. So let's check it out. I did forget to. Let me get out of this zoom. There we go. I did forget to put one end if at the very end here. And that is the one that closes up the check if there is a search value right here. Okay, so I didn't put the end if there initially when I copied in the code because I wanted to go ahead and explain this stuff first. But if you're doing it on your own, it's a better idea to close up the if statements right after you copy them so you don't forget that. Okay, so let's hit stop up here so I can rerun my macro. And actually that reminded me, our macro right here, the submit button does not call the macro that stores data in the data worksheet. It calls our validate form macro. So what we actually have to do first is we don't have to update the submit button. It works okay but it calls our validate form macro, which we created many tutorials ago. You can see right down here, store update data. I have already updated that in this example, but you're going to need to go ahead and update that. And once you've updated that, we can go ahead and test the macro. So let's first start with adding a new record and then updating that record. Thanos decided to hire his daughter Gamora. Give her an ID number of 333, start date, doesn't matter. Let's just fill this in. Department green, of course, because she's green. A dash three and doesn't match. Okay, retry. What did I do wrong? There we go. Okay, remember your data validation rules. And let's do a number should be okay yes submit success data and there we go Gamora let's update her real quick make sure everything's okay there we go she is moving to sector 7 submit success perfect so you can see that once you're able to locate records on the data tab, it's fairly easy to do anything that you want with them, to update them, to change them. And in the very next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to delete these records. It's going to follow pretty much a similar pattern to what we did in this tutorial, but there are a couple of other things that we have to take note of when we're going to delete records. But as far as this tutorial is concerned, I'd say the number one thing is to remember that what I did is I put the submit button, I made it so the submit button would work to put new data on the data tab or to update the data tab. If you wanted, you could add a third button here and that could be for updating data, but I really don't think that would improve the usability of this form. But as far as this tutorial is concerned, that's how you can input new data as well as update existing data using this form. So stay tuned for the next tutorial where I show you how to delete the data. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.